Uh, go. Hello, welcome to workshop Wednesday for fellowship advising. I'm Danica Brown, Director of Curriculum and Fellowships in the Center for Civic Leadership. And I'm joined today by Morgan Kinney. Would you like to introduce yourself, Morgan? Yes, I'm Morgan Kinney. I'm an Associate Director in the Center for Civic Leadership. I oversee our student-led programs, teach our capstone class, and I'm part of our advising team. Fantastic. So today we'll be talking about identifying host affiliations and graduate programs for your fellowship applications. But first, let's let's take care of a few reminders. Um, the first reminder is that we hope you are already on our Canvas page um, and uh, for fellowship resources. We also have a Rice Engagement and Academic Leadership Canvas page, which has um, um, some reflective prompts for you to work through. Additionally, we hope by this time, if you have decided to apply for a fellowship or are curious about applying for a fellowship and are thinking about some and need some and would like to talk through uh, with some CCL advisors about your options that you have filled out a fellowship interest form. And that chat that link is available on um, the resource page in the canvas so uh, that that form just gives us some information about you and indicates the fellowships that you've been thinking about and someone will follow up probably several people will follow up with you depending on how many you have decided you're interested in and we can go through the process and make sure you're on track to to succeed with that application all right so today we're going to talk about the process of identifying host affiliations for research and graduate program that you might want to apply for through your fellowship let's start with what is a host affiliation so for for research projects since these the the research that you'll be doing is highly independent there is a, a need for a, a local institution or some entity, whether that's a, uh, a faculty member in a graduate program, uh, a lab, a library, some nonprofit organization that has a research arm that can provide resources and uh, advising and speak to the credibility of your research project. So, these uh, host affiliation is required for Fulbright research and for the internal Wagner award. So you have to have a letter from one of these organizations that says that they, they um, agree to be a resource for you um, that, and it doesn't, they don't have to fund you. They, they just have to provide you uh, advising support or resources like connections to, if you're doing, say, an ethnographic study, connections to the communities you're interested in working with, um, uh, maybe a space, if they have space available for you, or someone who can help you navigate uh, sort of the international context you're, you're in. Um, this is important for your application because it helps you give an actual rationale for why you want to study in that country and the the thinking is here right that there's resources in the country to do the type of research you're interested in that you have contacts already in that country who are willing to support you and navigate any kind of changes you need to do um, and that the research is valuable in that country in uh, identifying a host affiliation, you're also demonstrating the, the research and commitment that you've made to the project, that you're not just um, making up a interesting research question, but that you've actually reached out to people to ensure that your, your research question is interesting, that it's a feasible uh, research question. So you've demonstrated your, your research into doing your research. And um, when a host affiliation says, yeah, we definitely would like to support this research, we can see the ways in which this research, the research you generate could contribute to our understanding of local context or um, issue area context, then that demonstrates that there's that the it's a valuable research project and that local 
locals buy into it. That's especially important for Fulbright because Fulbright is uh, is sponsored by commissions in in the country. So they have what they want is work that is actually going to contribute something to the country location, the geographical lo location that you're in. So um, an, a host affiliation is a way to make a more of an argument about the value of that project. For Fulbright study, for example, you're not applying to do independent research. And for some of these other fellowships, which I'll talk about um, briefly, you're you're applying to do a graduate degree. Um, so most of these fellowships are that that you apply to to support a graduate degree are of course interested in your leadership and your ambassadorial potential but you're going to do that work in a very specific uh program that is related to your career goals and the uh, academic experience that you already bring to the table so let me just kind of talk out through some of the differences here fulbright study um so for example in all of the uk fulbrights um are 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 not for independent research they're definitely for um, uh, programs of study they have partnership programs with a lot of uh, universities so you can apply to say bristol the university of bristol fulbright and that that's for doing a master's degree at bristol specifically there's also an open award um, and that's for doing a, a master's degree anywhere those are so, for example, you might have like 20 people applying for Bristol, but you probably have 300 plus applying for the open. So there's lots of reasons why you might want to really do your research on a, on partner programs and identify a university that has a great program and can also uh, qualify for the Fulbright study. Cambridge and Oxford don't. You'd have to go through the um, open award. So, for example. If you're applying for Rhodes, obviously that's for an Oxford degree program. So you wanna do the, now Rhodes has a, a program of study essay. So you wanna make sure you understand the programs available at Oxford, which, um, and how to, how to you see yourself in those programs and what you're qualified for. Um, keep in mind for, for these, the Rhodes, Mitchell and Marshall that I'm talking about, you may change your mind about the program that you, go into based on their advice and stuff, but you have to make a real uh, clear argument about why you're talking, why you're applying for the fellowship for that program and it to strengthen your degree. Mitchell is rather than writing a, an essay about a specific program, you, you identify a list of choices, uh, like three, I believe is the total. So three programs in Ireland that you are interested in doing. Marshall is a little bit more complicated too. It's a two-year funding, so you you can uh, propose two one-year masters at multiple institutions. So you might do a one-year master at Bristol and another one-year master at Birmingham. Um, but then you also have to have a backup choice. So maybe your your backup choice is a year master at Essex and a year master at at Manchester. So that's a that requires you to do a lot of research um and also it's important to remember that marshall is uh the uk government investing in your uh, uh future and they think all of their universities are great so your program of study is an opportunity to demonstrate that you've looked at all of the the graduate programs in the UK and you've identified all of the great ones where you could possibly work at and it's not just Oxford or Cambridge or London School of Economics, um, though you are welcome to apply for those. If you do apply for either of those in your first choice, you're going to have to have one, your alternative choice can't include any of those. Um, so, and that's all spelled out in the rules and, and of course we're happy to talk you through that. The Michel de Vivile is a a master's program at Sciences Po in uh, Paris. Uh, they have English master's uh, master's programs delivered in English, but you'll want to look at what what is available to you there. The program that you do do choose is important because 
they it it does several different things. It demonstrates you really understand what academic and research skills you bring to the to this postgraduate opportunity and how different postgraduate opportunity or graduate programs of study contribute to your goals, what, where you see yourself in the future. It again, just as with the affiliate, it's it sig signals your um, ability to identify programs and follow through and talk through your proposal with people at that those institutions because you'll want to reach out and make sure you know what's what's available at those institutions and um, how you see yourself doing the work there. And it it really demonstrates clear reasons for why you want to do do this this degree, um, whether it's a Fulbright in Oslo or uh, Marshall in the UK, why is it you need to go to Oslo or the United Kingdom to do this? So I think about Marshall in terms of you looking at the various different master's programs there. The, their master's programs are very niche and they, get, they really give you an opportunity to really focus on like migration studies or something of that to that effect. And so you can do that there and for different reasons. So really your argument for why you why you want to apply to these different programs helps you hone your whole application in general. I just want to chime in that each of those uh, different options for different fellowships has a full page on our canvas for fellowship resources. So if any of those piqued your interest and you hadn't already been checking it out, um, there's a full page where you can read more about it. Absolutely. It's a great point. And maybe if you have been thinking about it and now you are, we're excited to hear that. Go back and, and fill out that form again, the, the fellowship interest form, and let us know you now want to apply for a marshal. All right, so to do the research, uh, the necessary to, to start this process to find a host affiliation or to find a program of study, I think it's it's really important and we're, we're going to give you a, a handout on the canvas page a worksheet for you to start this work but it's important for you to inventory your own your own current professional network of connections and then to do the re outreach to potential collaborators or potential connections who could give you an idea of who you might follow up with for students in the past who have gone through this process for example one reached out to a, a current PI on campus and they, they had a, an international collaborator in Brazil and they made that connection for them. Another student was uh, went to an lecture event um, at the Chow Center and found and took the opportunity to talk with people about what they were interested in doing and they got they got connected to collaborators in Thailand. Um, a really effective approach and and one that I that we can think of an example where a student found articles around the topic of privacy in India and they reached out directly to the authors which seems seems like oh that's exciting but it is it's fun to talk to the people who have produced these produced the scholarship and they're happy to talk with you for the most part um, so it, it definitely is in your best interest to just do this inventory and think about who you would like to reach out to, which gives you like the idea of like, how do you just write an email to somebody and that it's it, you get used to it. But first, you want to think about what's the what's the goal of the email for an affiliation, you're hoping that somebody will be interested in supporting your project. You don't want them to think that you're asking them for money because nobody likes to get emails where they're asked for money. But you so you want to make sure that you, they are interested in your project. They know that there's a it's it's not a huge ask, but that you're looking for someone who's willing to support your ideas. So you'll want to make sure to use your professional email, which at this point is your rice email, unless you, for example, have some other connection, but this would really be an uh, academic uh, um, introduction. So you want to tell the people who you are, who you are, um, what fellowship you're looking at, and maybe why, um, why you need a host affiliation, and then how you know that this is the right person 
to be reaching out to like you've read their article you saw their TED talk <laughs> you you looked at all of the resources on their research center page that kind of stuff reading their article or their work is the number one important thing to do i highly recommend if you're going to reach out to an academic for someone who's producing research in the area you're interested in read their research you want to talk about what your research question is or the area that you're hoping to take where you're hoping to get research experience maybe if you're if you're picking out a lab because they have a certain type of technology that you're really hoping to gain experience in so give them a sense of what it is you're hoping to do and it probably would be a good idea for the affiliation to already include a right because you're asking for support and if they're willing to think about um, uh, attaching their organization's name to your work you might want to attach a resume and, and relevant research work if you have publications or even just paper um, attach that for them clarifying question Yes, when you say including college affiliation. Are you referring to Rice, an academic school? I'm assuming not McMurtry or Jones. Yeah, I think that's a good question because I just realized that that this was on the slide and <laughs> it, it took me a little off guard, which is why I didn't say anything about it. So thank <laughs> you for asking. Yes, you want to talk about your school department major. If you're part of a research center, a lab, they don't really know what McMurtry is or why that's what I wanted to make sure is clear <laughs> yeah yeah you definitely don't need to say that you're you're with Jones the best college on campus yeah yeah you want to and I, I think that's a really great uh question to bring up here because remember what you're trying to establish is your professional credentials here so why why would somebody want to affiliate with you if on the other hand you are reaching out to a rice alum or something that's doing international research they very well might care that you were in jones college so use your use your uh, your best judgment there so a little different approach if you're doing queries to graduate programs um so if you're looking at uh if you're looking at a researcher you you you're interested in Sussex because you're interested in migration studies and you you know Dr. So and so is there doing work on a topic that's specifically of interest to you because you've done your background research. The, um, then you'll want to reach out to that person, you might want to reach out to the recruiter, you might want to reach out to the graduate. Um, the graduate studies uh the departmental coordinator or whatever's there to see who you can talk to but your goals is to determine if dr so and so who you want to do that research with is going to be there the year that you're planning to come um if there's if there's space to do the kind of research you want to do and who you might talk to to get a real concrete sense about program experience Notice you don't for a good a good thing to remember is for programs of study is you don't have to have a letter of affiliation, but you have to write up a program of study essay uh, statement that makes it very clear that you know what's in that program what's available to you in that graduate program what that you know that there's there's these three researchers who do X and that you've already spoken to one and they said they were interested in what you want to do that they have um, they're affiliated with the Center for. scientific advancement of cancer research that you're planning to do you really want concrete specific things if you can talk to graduate students in the program, and so you know that they have a really great Community outreach. Um, program that will allow you to get Community engagement experience all of those details as much as you can mine from from your contacts will be helpful for you writing your program of study. Um, that's also true in the affiliation if you can establish a relationship and and communication with them and get some some uh, really concrete context information like about 
context, cultural context, and what the country, what the area is like to live in, what's available to, to you to engage in. All of these things are going to be really helpful details in your application to persuade the reviewers that you've done the research and you really are full on aware of what you want to get it out of the experience and what's available to you there. So when you send that uh, that uh, email again, full introduction of yourself and not your college, but your professional affiliations within the university, um, what fellowship it is you're, you're uh, applying for, what your goals for graduate study at the institution, if you have some connection, I mean, if if you're contacting the researcher you hope to work with, show that you've done your research about that person, and then talk about what you hope to to do specifically, um, or the direction you're hoping to go. You, I wouldn't necessarily attach your your resume or transcripts or papers or anything to this initial email, but I would offer to provide those documents if they're willing to talk with you further. Um, that would be my suggestion on the program query, especially since you might be reaching out to, to someone who's on sabbatical or someone who's not the actually going to be reviewing your credentials. Um, and they just, they're just connecting you to people. So be judicious about it. You don't want to overwhelm people. Does that all seem um, clear, Morgan? Yeah, definitely. I had a follow up. You mentioned at, at the top of of this slide exactly who to reach out to that there might be a recruiter or someone. Um, and I just want to circle back on host affiliation emails. Uh, those should be going directly to the PI of of the lab. Or are there other recommendations for who exactly to reach out to on the host affiliation? Yeah, that's a great question. So if it's a lab where the research is being done and you hope to associate yourself with that PI or with that main researcher, for sure, if it's a nonprofit organization and it has a research wing or a program directly related to it, I would try and identify the person who's most aligned with the program, doing the program work. Um, if you don't know who to talk to um, and you're, you're just finding uh, some contact information there, make that clear that what you hope to um, ha happen with the follow-up emails is to connect with the right person. So ask that question. Could you tell me who the right person to talk to if I wanted to talk about affiliation for this research question? Definitely. Um, sometimes it's hard to find the right person. So if if you're just using like a a, a, a coordinator or a, a someone who handles the administrative operations of the place, just be gracious and ask for their guidance, and they generally will uh, point you to the right direction. I, I think to your point, it's important to know who you're writing to and why. So do your research. So um, we offer support. We're happy. Again, I, I think like if 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 you are concerned about your emails or you you just would like feedback on how you're approaching, we're happy to help you with. We'll read drafts. We'll talk it through. We'll we'll troubleshoot if you get if you get shut down if nobody seems to be responding to you maybe we can talk through some other uh some other approaches um and then of course we're we're totally happy i mean our our main goal is that you are really thinking about what your motivation is and what your goals are and that that matches with the fellowship you're applying for and whether or not that's this particular fellowship or other fellowships but and uh, i think that we also want to help you translate this experience of doing this outreach and finding these resources. We can, you can, that can translate into stuff beyond this particular fellowship application. In terms of timeline, you want to look at the due dates for the fellowships we've been talking about today, the UK, Mitchell, Marshall, Rhodes, that those deadlines are early. They're August 28th for the internal process. Fulbright and Wagner is September 4th for research, the research affiliations, those are the host affiliations that you'll need to be thinking. 
So that I, identifying by this June, this month, you should be talking, if you're watching this in June, that this should be, uh, you should have made the outreach to more than one professor, talk to some organizations, don't have to enter into an, a, a partnership with the first organization you talk to. You can you can talk to many organizations and hone it down to who, where's the best fit. Um, we'd be happy to talk that through. But by mid July, you should have you should have a pretty solid relationship and know that your uh, your affiliate your organization is willing to submit that letter by the end of August. And you need to have major program selections so that you can really do the re research and start writing through what your rationale is for each of those re those programs. Some general tips uh, you should, especially from based on guidance from Fulbright, and we will we'll give you a handout or we will make available a handout that gives that repeats the Fulbright's guidance on uh, letters of affiliation. It's available in the Fulbright application or website materials, but we 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 pulled it out specifically for you to reflect on um, as you're thinking about this here. But you should really you need to look at that Fulbright web page. Look at what the country requirements are. Um, make sure that that your what your what you're proposing matches, and that uh, that you know what you need from the affiliation. This should be the right fit. I mean, don't try and force um, because you're really interested in going to Malaysia, and so you're trying to make up a research project that that you could do in Malaysia. Um, or make fit for Malaysia, but it doesn't fit really. It's it's something that's better suited for Oslo. You, you, you need to really think that through make sure that there's a right fit. Start this right away. Don't don't put off your letter of affiliation if you're uh, if you have that tendency to be afraid to send that email or you just kind of avoid it. And you keep skipping over it on your to do list. Stop skipping over it on your to do list and get it out because you, time goes fast and uh, you want to make sure this is uh, set up early and you never know what what things might happen might fall through or change and so definitely uh, get that outreach done early and for the affiliation make sure you share the information the requirements for the letter and that's that's based the guidance from Fulbright have those requirements so you want you want the letter of affiliation writer to have a pretty clear sense of what what it is is they need to put into that letter in the format um, you can use that material for wagner as well um, if just a reminder if you're applying for full right research you can uh, turn also have that that application considered for a wagner you just have to include a budget and your affiliation letter can work for that um, so and, if you're not applying for Fulbright research, but you're doing a Fulbright program, another approach is to think about could you do is what you want to get out of that program a research experience and can you propose to do independent research um, with the people you have identified in that program and get a letter of affiliation for them and submit as a Wagner. Those are all options and we're happy to talk that through more with you. So we're, um, as I mentioned, we'll have a, a worksheet uh, for you. And uh, let me just walk you through what we've set up for you. Um, this, this is the goal of this worksheet is, is a, a reflective exercise, right? It's, it's for you to sit down and inventory because you may have more connections um, and more possible connections than you have really thought about up to this point. So start with lining out what is the topic of your research or um, on the actual uh, uh, revised affiliation that addresses program. And also the question is, is like, what's the area you hope to do a master's program in? What's the discipline? Then start identifying who, who you know are um, experts in this area or at least have uh, experience in the area especially if they happen to be like international experts and they have uh, they some of their research is international um, 
than uh, no any of them that you've already got a personal connection with because those are the ones that you want to prioritize because they're the easiest to to do the re outreach to um, and then do that research think about in the host country who who might be experts and centers and organizations in that host country that you might think about think about on rice what what are because we you rice has loads of resources and loads of people doing really interesting work so start thinking about what are the centers on campus that have connections to this so like the example earlier about the student who went to the lecture at the chow center I, I, is there are there centers that specifically have speakers that you we have the baker institute on campus and they have so many pro program areas that there's probably uh, someone in the Baker Institute that would be happy to have a conversation with with you, for example. Um, alumni checking out uh, uh, Rice alumni. Oh, just to back up, the centers departments that have host country experiences. Again, Baker's good place. OISS, the people in the Office of International Students and Scholars have connections all over the world and know uh, who, who we have Fulbright scholars from all over the world that can be a resource to you. They're happy to talk to you about their host countries. So that that's a great place to start. Um, if you, I, if you if a good person in the Center for Civic Leadership to talk with is Kelsey Ullum. She has a lot of connections with students, uh, excuse me, with faculty and scholars working all over the world um, from Rice, and uh, uh, she'll, she'd be happy to help you brainstorm connections there. Definitely look for Rice alumni through Sally Portal or other avenues, uh, LinkedIn. On LinkedIn, if you follow Rice University, um, just on their main page, there's a tab that says alumni. And you can search alumni by titles, keywords, um, locations. It's super helpful. Definitely helpful. And there's, and you definitely know that Rice alumni are there to help you. That's their, they they love reconnecting with uh, students. Also, you can uh, look at uh, the Fulbright pages for Fulbright alumni who are, are working in the areas that you've done, and that, that would be another. Uh, Alum, alumni connection, right? That former Fulbrighters are happy to to give you advice and support, and we have lots of Fulbright alumni from Rice as well. So the the real key here is that you're just doing an initial brain dump and recognizing you have all sorts of sources of information at your fingertips. We also on the back, on the second page of that worksheet have generated some some following steps, some steps and resources that might be useful for you as you as you go through this process. The first step I always recommend is to do a literature review um, and identify researchers um, and who they're affiliated with. And so you, you've got a list of authors authors mention other researchers and you can reach out to them and start there. There's also for international resources, I've given you a couple links that give you some idea. Um, the UI Chicago has a, a, inter, a list of international research centers. Maybe there's a center on there that's a fit for you or not. But same with the NGO think tanks from Berkeley. Um, and the uh, sort of out of date. <laughs> uh, there's a new one coming out in 2022. I don't know if the if Fondren's going to have it, um, but the International Research Centers Directory. Look through those. If you don't have, if there's not a specific one that works for you. It can give you an idea of what kind of organizations you might research, and then you can go. You can have a, a better idea of how to Google to find some some uh, connections. There's also, uh, I think a really good strategy is to go to like the National Institutes for Health if that's relevant to your work or uh, the Department of Education if that's relevant to your work. Any, any kind of uh, 
national association, um, federal association, national association that's doing work in the area that you that that you want to do and see just poke around in their collaborations and see if there's uh, a potential affiliations. For example, if you look for cancer research in India in the NIH, you get you get this you can go to this blog that talks about the, their India collaboration in 2017 and they list at least they're talking about four or five different organizations that they're collaborating on. So that gives you uh, those kind of things can give you ideas. So just some techniques to guide your your research so you're not just um, stabbing in the dike dark, excuse me. Um, there's guidelines from uh, Fulbright that's really helpful, um, which we'll also link, we'll link for you. For international graduate study, there's some really great resources out there. UK has been the most common place for, for students to be looking for uh, graduate study. So I've also, I've listed those here. Um, this Padlet, the UK graduate school application resources is really thorough. Um, there's a complete university guide. Marshall Scholarship also has a program guide. Um, study Portals has developed a bunch of different sites for looking at for different types of programs internationally. Um, Master's Portal uh, will take you to programs in Europe. There's also organizations in every country that have that those kind of um, resources. So think about who's doing these kind of resources and look, do the research in the country to see if there's examples for you to follow. Anything you'd like to add or ask on that, Morgan? I don't think so. Just to say that the link to this worksheet will be um, on the page that this video is posted in. So if you close out of the video, you should have all the, all the helpful links that we have re referenced um, will be right there. Fantastic. I want to remind you if, that if you need guidance to any of these resources or you would like to talk them through a little bit more, uh, all CCL, the CCL advising team is happy to support you on that. And we hold, uh, currently we hold online office, office hours at 9, 12, and 4 at um, uh, Monday through Thursday. And someone will, there's a Zoom link that's on the Canvas page and you can jump in on our advising page on the website and you can jump on and get some questions answered and get any other kind of support you're, you need for um, applying for fellowships. Fellowships are great. They're, it's a great opportunity for you to, to do. We, and we're here for you the whole step of the way. I was just going to uh, mention, even if all you need is somebody to read over that email and then kick your butt into sending it along early, we can do yeah. that too and drop in hours. We absolutely can. We can sit online with you and watch you hit send. That'd be great. Well, I think that's it for today. So thank you for joining us. We, uh, we, we look forward to talking with you and supporting you on your fellowships in the future. Bye.